Hello everyone and welcome to episode 160 of Classic Leet. My name is Scott and the handsome man doing the shimmy next to me is Dustin. What's going on, man? Uh, not much. When was the last time you saw Heat? I, I've never seen Heat. That, that's the one with De Niro and Pacino, right? Yep. Not. I've not seen it. It's great. I uh, I heard him talking about it on the uh, the Bombcast a little bit, and uh, everyone seems to love it. My old roommate in college loved it. He thought it was the best movie. Oh, I shouldn't say that. It was one of his favorite movies. Yeah, I just got wa- done watching it. I got the Blu-ray. Oh, nice. Did you get a deal on it? Or yeah, what, what's I got to use that uh, Ed McKay. Mc- um, what's McKay? Every once in a while. So Say what? What's McKay? Oh, MKs. It's like a um, like a used bookstore slash games, music. They got like vinyl, all kinds of stuff. Nice. Uh, but why did I watch it? Um, oh, I just think of Al Pacino flipping out. Okay. Um, he he chews the scenery a lot in that in that movie. Um, and I'll, I'll find myself not quoting it directly, but thinking of it while I'm at work. Mm-hmm. Because it usually fits, and uh, today I just uh, I had to go sit and watch it. Gotcha. All right. See now, what stinks is I'm not able to participate in your memory that much. Yeah, I can only take it in. I, I, I can't draw any of the references. You're in a dancey mood, though. I, I like the upbeat. Uh, <laughs> you wouldn't know what this song uh, reminds me of. There, there's like a part of it. Um, Easy Lover from Phil Collins and that black dude. I forget his name. You know, you know the song I'm talking about. Uh, I don't think so, actually. Oh, oh man! If only, if only I was ballsy enough. If I had been drinking, I would try to sing it for you. <laughs> Stone right. Cold Sober. So I, uh, I'm not going to venture out into singing it. Plus, there's another song over top of it right now. Maybe someday I will figure out um, a good way to play YouTube clips in the background. But again, I don't want to get the uh, podcast flag for having content ID stuff. And that song's for sure going to get flag copyright. So, well, yeah, man. Uh, So you watched Heat and work inspired Mm it. Um, Care to elaborate a little bit? Or no? Uh, Um. It's just he <laughs> at one point he's talking to this uh his snitch. Okay. And he just flips out and yells at him like uh he he's trying to get information from him and he just starts screaming, Give me all you got Gimme all you got like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the way that he reacts to this incompetent CI is how I feel when I'm at work sometimes. Uh, I understand. We all have to do that, uh, whether it's internal customers or external customers. It's always <laughs> like, are you kidding me? Right, yeah. So, uh, cool. Well, um, Dustin, I uh, I got to say I'm a little disappointed in you. Okay. So, you're Mr. Halloween, right? Mm-hmm. And the, uh, the only thing I saw posted, like, from your profile on... Uh, like via the classic, so maybe just because we're the classic elite friends or whatever, uh, like I don't have Facebook, so we're not actual Facebook friends, right? But all I saw was you in a jacket and jeans holding your son's hand trick or treating. I didn't <laughs> yeah. see, I didn't see any costume, I didn't see any blood. There was well, no like zombie makeup. It looked like on, I mean, on Saturday night. Yeah, you you wimped out on me, man. Well. There's a story behind this. Okay. Um, it's pretty short when the missus came down with food poisoning. Oh. So I had all all of the daddy or all of the parenting fell on me that day. Okay. And that, and that included uh, Halloween duty. So oh, that sucks. Like, Here I thought I caught you in a big, like, tremendous lie. <laughs> right? <laughs> nope, you're just being a good guy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, I even Solly wasn't feeling it mostly because uh, he had this ghost costume that his uh, grandmother made him. And uh, I put it on him and it, it lasted for like two seconds. I didn't even get it buttoned all the way. He'd oh, really? 
he whipped it off and threw it in the driveway. <laughs> and I was like, yep, I'm with you, buddy. Let's just go. Was it uh, like a felt material? Like, would it have been a little itchy or... I, mean, I guess felt's not itchy, but... It was basically like a... Uh, I think it was like a pillowcase. <laughs> it was basically the... Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. Zarek nailed it. Um, basically just like a pillowcase material. Kind yeah, okay. of your, your average sheets. So that wouldn't that wouldn't have flown. It was so cold here. So, but shout out to our buddy Zarek, uh, who's joined us in the chat room. Uh, if you are a listener of the show, you're aren't familiar with Zarek, but he's able to join us live for a little bit this week. Um, and then he's got a great comment at the end that we'll get to it. A great comment on last week's episode that we'll get to at the end of this episode. Uh, so yeah, um, I guess as far as Halloween goes, uh, did I tell you about the best? costume that i saw uh-uh. so we haven't had a chance to talk about halloween yet or trick-or-treat have we i don't believe so no because we recorded on wednesday last week right yeah and my fascist state oh and we got jake daly in here sweet jake daly from the daily jake show yeah there we go and uh yeah, so anyways, okay, so at one point I had a... I told someone else this story. That's why I'm getting confused. So I... Uh, the first kid that showed up was a Mario. And I'm like, okay, this is going to be a decent trick-or-treat. Mm-hmm. A couple minutes later, a Luigi randomly shows up. <laughs> All right. Who just dresses as Luigi? You know <laughs> what I mean? Awesome. Yeah. I, you know, absolutely. And here's the best part. The, the first little Mario was a little guy, and uh, Luigi was a tall, skinny dude. So it, j- it worked out really, really well. Uh, it was funny, mm-hmm. but that's not my favorite costume. My favorite costume was the uh, Stay Puff Marshmallow Man. Oh, all right. And you, do you have, um, gosh, it's like a nylon parachute material uh, that... It's stitched together and makes like a big snowman and you hook a fan up to it and mm-hmm. it turns into lawn decorations. Well, that's what this costume was made out of and had a portable fan inside of it. So as <laughs> that's they were, awesome. so as, so they came up to me like all ballooned up. Right. And as they were walking away, I saw the little fan. I'm like, that is so cool. That's cool. So that, that was, uh, that was it. And I want to let you know that, um, Josh is a fascist too, man. His trick or treat wasn't on Saturday either. Oh, it, it was is. Probably, it was probably like Meth Friday, right? Uh, yeah, Meth Friday. Well, in Kentucky, yeah. Yeah, Meth Friday, and uh, and no marijuana, Ohio. Did you see that the Ohio voted down legalization of marijuana? Good. The reason, the big reason, is uh, basically it would have made an instant monopoly. Oh, yeah. So it was like, what the hell? You know what I mean? If it's going to bring in revenue or whatnot, then that's one thing. But uh, whether you're for or against legalization, the way they were going to implement it was very, very poor. I I honestly don't care either way. My only, like, if Tennessee wants to legalize, I want to be, like, the 49th or 50th state. Okay, that makes sense. So, like, everybody and their grandmother doesn't flock to your state all of a sudden. Okay. (laughs) Asking, ask Colorado how that's treating them, right? Yeah, right, yeah. So, but uh, yeah, um, so I don't, I don't know what Ohio would be on marijuana Thursdays uh, for trick or treating. But uh, one of the big concerns, like the campaign things that would come out, and uh, one of the big things they were like railing against was like they're like gummies would be illegal, so your kids are going to eat your candy. Yeah. and then get all stoned and yeah. you know, instead of eating gummy bears. So, All right, well, uh, that is enough of politics talk because this is a video game podcast. We're going to talk about video games. That's right. We only talk about rapping about weed. Yeah, only rapping about weed yeah. and our boy Richie Branson. So, um, yeah, I had a, I had a really fun uh, Halloween. I guess I'll go on one little tangent here. Okay. But Notre Dame had a game that night, and I was surrounded by Ohio State fans, and it was a close game. Uh-huh. And they're unsufferable, man. <laughs> right, yeah. Oh, my God, they're the worst. <laughs> and they didn't have to play a game that day. So uh, they were and By the time Notre Dame was on, it was night, It was a night game on Halloween. Uh-huh. They were all drunk. Yeah. 
So it was, it was just bad for me. So, um, uh, yeah, let's let's move on to talk about some video game stuff. Have you been playing? Oh, I think, go ahead. I think, I think we need to uh, address the fact that this is literally the first time we've ever had chat in our chat. I know. So now we're not we're not used to what to do. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we've got uh, Jake and uh, Zarek going back and forth. Uh, well, not back and forth, but engaging in conversation together. Right. They're, and, they're chatting in the chat room. And it's, it's awesome. Just, it's, it's awesome and distracting for me because I just want to read what they're saying. Uh, but, um, yeah, so Overwatch, Dustin. Um, have you been following Overwatch at all? The new Blizzard game? No. Okay. It's a Team Fortress-style first-person shooter. Okay. And it's made by Blizzard. Which they make MMOs and a MOBA and a card game. What's that? Uh, what's that game? Is it Firewatch? That's also a game that they showed at E3. It's something Watch. That was not that, Night Night Watch. That was a first person shooter on the Xbox. Um, I, are you sure it wasn't Overwatch? I don't know. Let me look. Okay. So I think it's Overwatch that you're thinking of. No, I'm thinking of Firewatch. You're thinking of Firewatch? It, it, it's not a Blizzard game then. No, Campo Santo is the uh, developer. Oh, okay. I, I thought you were saying Blizzard had a game called Overwatch. Oh, no. No, so, no <laughs> Blizzard does have a game called Overwatch. Oh, duh, oh my gosh. Okay. Chat's got me all first? flustered. Yeah, right? <laughs> so uh, Firewatch was a game, uh, Zarek oh. says. I wonder if he used past tense on purpose or not. But uh, anyways, there's a rumor that was on Kotaku that um, Overwatch is going to come to PS4 and Xbox One as well as PC. Cool. And supposedly GameStop is the ones that uh, leaked this information by accepting pre-orders. Huh. So this is just a rumor at this point, but it, it looks likely. The game is in closed beta right now. Mm -hmm. I wasn't lucky enough to get in, but uh, it, it came with controller support. Hey. So there's I, I could really see it um, uh, doing well on console, but what, what has me confused is pre-order. I think everybody assumed that this game was going to be free-to-play. Right. Uh, which it still very well may be. It's just the fact that seeing GameStop involved makes me wonder about its free to playness. Is this going to be a forty, fifty, sixty dollar game that also has microtransactions? Maybe it's uh, like your pre order in hats. It could be. It does look pretty fun. Uh, you should check out some gameplay of it. Definitely, it looks pretty cool. Um, what, what would it take? I mean, is the first-person shooter a genre? Like, like what would take what would it take for you to get into a Blizzard game? Because you always seem to shy away from them. Um, I mean, if I owned them, <laughs> I'd play them. <laughs> well, like Hearthstone, you can own Heroes, you can own. Oh no, real games like Diablo three. I'd play that. <sighs> what out? Cutting deep, <laughs> kicking me where it counts, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I love their free-to-play games. Oh. Amber Alert. That's not good. Be on the lookout for a tan gold Honda Accord. Georgia Plates. Child. One. Two suspects. All right. You did your part. That's right. This will get posted it's late, but it's out on Twitch. so Streaming it. If you're in Tennessee. That, that was nuts. <laughs> um, oh, we've got uh, Okay, we do not have Tony uh, You clicking on the show notes Made me mm -hmm. think Tony was here <laughs> Alright But, uh, so, Batman Arkham Knight We talked about this being back on sale last week, I believe mm -hmm. And, uh, apparently a lot of people are still having problems with it um, There's some hitching um, And people just, in general, are not thrilled with the patches And what they've done for the performance on some PCs yeah. So Warner Brothers came out and said that they're just going to give you a refund regardless of the Steam policy. All right. So good for them for owning up, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. 
I, I heard this on the uh, the Bombcast, which, which is cool. But so someone like me that's in New Game Plus, I could even return it, I believe. Huh. Now in Good Conscious, I I can't do that. You know what I mean? I that right. would be stealing. I genuinely enjoyed the game. And I'm really bummed, because it runs really well on console, so I'm just really bummed that the PC people got such a shaft with it, and that's kind of overshadowed the game, since it was fun. It's probably going to make my top five games of the year. Huh. Right? And it's just been, you hear it and people cringe, you know? Yeah. Like, oh, Arkham Knight, that's too bad. Well, I, I really liked it. Um... What's the longest that you would play a game and feel comfortable returning it? Um, a few like minutes? It's two, it's two, oh, just a few minutes? Okay. Because yeah. Steam will let you play two hours. Oh, all right. Yeah, I'd, if... Like, I'd, I'd have to feel like this is completely broken. Otherwise, like, if I just... If I buy a bad game, then that's my fault. Uh, yeah, absolutely. But if I buy a broken game, that's the developer's fault. Yep. So, uh, and then the uh, let's get to the PlayStation Plus lineup because the big news we'll save for later. Alrighty. But uh, yeah, what do we have at the PS Plus uh, this month? So on let's see, P PlayStation Vita, you can get Invisibles. Uh, which I think is that AR game, right? You use the camera. I have absolutely no idea. Me either. I think it's an AR game. If it's okay. not, then what if? Uh, Dragon Fin Soup is available on um, PS Vita and PS3. Okay. Also on PS3, Mass Effect 2, which is a big one. Uh, I, I haven't played that one yet. Uh, Beyond Good and Evil HD. So they brought their, their A game on the PS3. And uh, Walking Dead Season 2 and Magicka 2 for PlayStation 4. Uh, looking forward to uh, maybe trying out some Magicka. I played a little bit of it on the PC. Uh, Biff McSkylark, a buddy, bought me a copy of uh, Magicka uh, back in the day. Right on. And I watched the Giant Bomb quick look of it, and it looked pretty neat. So, well, you know three dudes who have PS4s, so. I do. Let's play. Is it, just, it may just be co-op. Just be th- yeah. Yeah, two-person. So cool. Um, I don't know. I own Mass Effect 2 for the 360, and it's still okay. sealed. <laughs> <laughs> Shows you my intentions of ever playing that game. I played through the first one on easy. Okay. Um, I, I don't I, A lot of people love Mass Effect. It just... I don't know. It just turns me off. Uh, hearing how huge it is. It, it's like, uh, I don't know. What else? Uh, I own the GameCube version of Beyond Good and Evil. Okay. Uh, Beyond Good and Evil is supposed to be pretty sweet. Yeah. But it's PS3, and that's not hooked up anymore for me. Uh, Walking Dead Season 2, I already bought and haven't played. <laughs> I'll tell I, you how good that is in like three years. Yeah, right? I, I'm I'm going to get around to playing that, though. I really enjoyed the first season. It made my game of the year one year. Mm-hmm. Um... And then, uh, yeah, the big news this week, unless you're real interested to talk about one of those games. Uh, no, it's just I thought they were pretty hard-hitting games if you're a PlayStation Plus member. Yeah. Um, they don't Jay interest Daly me, but they're, they're out there. Mentioned that uh, they're putting 100 Xbox 360 titles on Xbox One. Yeah, Monday. And that would be November... Ninth. So, yeah. and Zarek also uh, comments here. Uh, he says, "Speaking of huge games, am I the only one <laughs> who wasn't mad that Fallout Four uh, doesn't have a giant map?" That's the first I'm hearing about it, and I'm not mad as long as there's like if there's a big sprawling map and nothing to do in it, then that's a waste of time. So, if it's a condensed map with a whole bunch of cool stuff to do in it, then I'm I'm down. I uh, I watched the um, the trailer. So you and me, Eric. Hmm. I watched the trailer. Oh yeah, yeah. I saw the one with the dog like a year ago. <laughs> I, I just saw the recent one. Um, 
He's saying that it takes uh, about 15 minutes to walk from one side of the other. But it's dense with stuff to do. Cool. Okay. I'm done with that. Yeah, otherwise it, it could feel like padding. Mm. I, I trust... Bethesda's had so many games that people love. I, I trust that people are really going to enjoy the hell out of this game. Even though Fallout 3 was really buggy when it first launched, uh, they patched it up and a lot of people loved it. People love New Vegas. Obviously, people love Elder Scrolls. So odds oh, are... I'm sure, I'm sure this is going to be buggy, too. Yeah, it's 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 enormous. Yeah. It's probably going to be a, a 30 gig day one patch or something. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I said it's enormous, and he's saying it's, it's from one side to the other, but you know it's going to be dense. You know there's going to be a lot there. Yeah. Uh, so that's cool. And um, the big news of the week, Dustin, was that King, the dudes that made Candy Crush, mm-hmm. got bought by Activision Blizzard for $5.9 billion. That's a whole lot of Snapple. So I, <laughs> that's a lot of Snapple. So I'm listening to a podcast called The Video Game Outsiders, and a guy put it into perspective. Star Wars, our childhoods, mm-hmm. four billion dollars. Man, this was five point nine billion dollars. Unbelievable. <laughs> That's all. Good gravy. I mean, Star. Oh. You thought? I mean, I heard Star Wars for four billion, and I'm like, well, that was a bad investment. Well, I was really wrong there. This just feels like this is. Like, it's too much money to spend on... Yeah. I don't know. They are a very successful company with uh, a long video game history, so they probably know what they're doing, and there's plenty to, there to support it. And I've heard other podcasts talk about it. Like, the uh, the morning stream had Tom Merritt on. And do you know Tom Merritt at all? He's like a tech guy. Mm. So, anyways, he was talking about it, um, and apparently the... Uh, the shares were sold for a little bit of a discount. Man. So they made it like more affordable or whatnot. Um, but still $5.9 billion. That's nuts. Um, apparently Candy Crush is still the fourth highest grossing game in the app store right now. <laughs> that's an old game, you know? Yeah. Well, uh, it's going to suck having to delete all those uh, Diablo 3 and Hearthstone Facebook invites. <laughs> From people, because like, right? That's what Candy Crush is all about. Yeah, you just get Facebook invites from everybody yep. and their and their grandma. Yep, yep. Uh, and heroes, or maybe I'll get Facebook just to troll you with Blizzard invites. <laughs> that would be awesome. Like my friends have been trying for ten years to get me to j- join Facebook, and what breaks me? Trolling my co-host. <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> and so that's, a, says, that's a noble endeavor, right? Uh, that would that would be a big troll. Uh, and Zarek uh, says it looks like taking advantage of casual gamers is a lucrative business. Yes, that's very true. So, uh, before we get into what we've been playing, Dustin, I have a huge, huge thank you, and I, I apologize to Dumbass for not bringing this up at the beginning of the show, but he absolutely saved last week's show. So, uh, with my new mic, I must have plugged my microphone into a different USB port. Okay. So, my mic setting was at 50%. Normally, it's at 100%. So, not only did I not record the first 20 minutes of the show the appropriate way last week, but the audio that did get recorded was really bad. My volume was incredibly low, and your and Tony's volumes was really high. So what I don't know how to do, in, um, and everything's recorded in mono, so this just comes through as one audio chunk. It's kind of like in Photoshop, how you flatten your layers. Mm-hmm. This is just all together. There's no like separating out the channels or anything. Okay. So what he was able to do is use this software that he said is from 1997 <laughs> uh, called Cool Cut Pro, and it takes the low sounds and raises them up but keeps the top sounds as the peak. So it kind of leveled everything out, so I sounded fairly normal. It added a lot of uh, static sound, but I'm able to clean that up. So uh, he was able to re-level and remaster the show, basically, from last week. 
and he lives in Canada. So I was able to take our recording, upload it to Google Drive, ship it over to him. He was able to download it, readjust the levels, and send it back to me within about 20 minutes. Dude, that's like that awesome. just blows my mind that we were able to do that. Like it's the future. It is, and he hit me up on Battle.net, uh, and he's like, "Hey, what's up, man?" I'm like, "Hey, how you doing?" I'm like, "You're gonna be mad at me because I screwed up the audio levels again." And he he's got a buddy that's an audio engineer, so he is particular about the audio quality, right? Mm-hmm. So I greatly appreciate that he still listens to our show. I was putting <laughs> him through the ringer from time to time. <laughs> Uh, but anyways, so he saved the audio version and the video version uh, because what he sent back, I was able to uh, realign with the two videos and post that to YouTube. And I think that if you're not looking for it, you can't tell that I uh, edited in a whole different audio track. Like I thought huh. it looked okay. Um, like it was recorded live the, the proper way. And then the audio came through on the podcast just fine. So thank you very, very much to Dumbass, and hopefully I don't need to have you do that again, but it was amazing having somebody jump in and help me out when I was, dude, I was depressed. I was like, I can't believe it. Like, I just screwed up this whole episode, and I haven't had a botch like that in a minute. So yeah, thanks to Dumbass. Um, so Dustin, man, what have you been playing? Uh, Dark Souls. You... Said that you were holding off last week. You're like, I've stayed strong. I'm playing Metal Gear. I'm staying <laughs> strong, man. Yeah, I just went ahead and watched a uh, spoiler review of MGS5. So I could start playing some Dark Souls. Okay, what was, I was reading the chat. What did you say about MGS5? I watched a spoiler review of that. Did you really? I did. Wow. So, I, but like I watched, like I know what the the end is and mm-hmm. i'm just kind of like huh okay all right hmm i i don't think this is going i don't think metal gear solid's going to get a back to back game of the year from you mm-hmm. no we uh yep. Zarek says in the chat uh there's a way to record all the audio separately uh but he said i did a nice job on the edit so thank you for that uh, yeah, I, I do normally record the audio separately um, as well as the video from OBS. But if you have something else to tell me about OBS, that would be great. Because um, maybe it'd save me a step. But I like having the redundancy. Like, it saved us last week, right? Mm-hmm. Having the recording twice. Yeah. I just don't need a power outage. So Dark Souls. Epic Name Bro sucked you back in. He did. And Marcus. I've enjoyed I've enjoyed the videos you put up. Yeah, did you see number two? Uh, parts of it. Did you see where I hit the uh, the first boss huh. one time and almost killed him? No. Oh man, it was good. I, was I just, wasn't expecting it. I was just uh, frankly I, I I skipped around a little bit just to um, see the video quality because we okay. had that comment. Yeah, yeah. What did you think? I thought it was about the same. I I think it's just a muddy game. Yeah. Oh, I did buy an Elgato's uh, HD60. Ooh. It was on sale on Amazon, and I got some gift cards. Cool. So. What was it? Uh, what did it usually run? Uh, like 170 180 and It was on sale for 155 Yeah, that's not bad. So I, But I had $75 in Amazon cash. So after taxes oh. and stuff, it was like 90 bucks. And I'm like, you know what? I've That's got a, a Dark, Dark Siders two review coming out. I'm like, I'm it's gonna, time. yeah. And plus, I would really like to be able to record uh, my PC at sixty frames per second. Mm-hmm. But I just don't have a powerful enough machine to have DX Tori and Fraps do a good enough job. Mm-hmm. And so I can get the games to run at sixty frames a second, but I can't get them to record necessarily at sixty frames a second. Right. Unless it's like a uh, a lighter game like Ori in the Blind Forest or Devil's Bluff. Mm-hmm. Those recorded at 60, no problem. But like The Witcher, I can get to run at 60, but I can't record at 60. Batman, I can run at 60, can't record at 60. Right. So I think I'll be more likely to make some videos if I have that equipment. Um, cool. But Jake, uh, Jake says, sorry to keep jumping in on your Dark Souls, that no, OBS no. crashes on him. That, that terrifies me. It better not crash. Uh, we've been lucky so far. 
I did render out a video though for Devil's Bluff. Okay. And as soon as I opened it, my computer just restarted. <laughs> and I found a typo in some uh, text that I put on. Uh-huh. So I went back to my save. So much of the editing is gone. So I have to redo it. It stinks. Oh, goodness. oh well. So, okay, so Dark Souls, you are um, you're on a new journey. You're continuing the beginner's quest. Mm-hmm. And I guess, are you enjoying it as much as, as as you have some of the older Souls games? Or is it because you've played Kingsfield kind of recently that this one feels good? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, Dark, Dark Souls is so far my favorite Souls game. Oh, okay. Like, I think I like it more than Bloodborne. I don't know. I haven't played Bloodborne in a minute. I might want to go back to that. Uh after I'm done with Dark Souls and, and see what I think. I still haven't played through Dark Souls 2. I own it on PC, PC, but I don't want to play it on PC. I'd rather play it on a console. I was thinking about getting the uh, PS4 definitive version. I thought you were going to say a 100-foot HDMI cable. <laughs> I already have one of those. Um, but yeah, uh, Dark Souls is great. Sweet. Uh, I don't know if I could have more to say about it other than I mean I've already talked about it a lot because I played through it before when I accidentally beat it the the first time (laughs) (laughs) I forgot about it didn't you get to the end and you're like oh I guess I'm done Uh, yeah because I I wanted to play a little bit because I was that was when I was playing Dark Souls or excuse me Demon Souls and putting them up on the uh, YouTube channel Mm -hmm. and I wanted to play the Souls games really bad but I couldn't play Demon Souls because I couldn't record, so I played Dark Souls instead, and I ended up playing like all the way through it. I was okay. like, I'll play it a little bit, and then I'll come back to it, and, and no, okay, I played this a little bit, and, and and all of a sudden I'm at the the end boss. So I was like, well, I guess I'll just beat it, start a new character. <laughs> so are, are you new game plusing, or are you um, starting from scratch? No, uh, this is from scratch. This is uh, <laughs> actually I uh, wanted a uh, specific sword that you can get at the beginning of the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's called the the Black Knight sword, and it's a uh, it actually is super powerful for the beginning of the game. That's how I ended up hitting the the first boss one time and nearly killing him. Um, so I had to like I would start the game and run like 15 to 20 minutes into the first and kill this one specific enemy that drops it. Mm -hmm. And if I didn't get the drop, then I'll have to delete that character and start over. How many times did you have to do that? Um, I think I did it three or four times, got the drop, recorded a video, and the video wouldn't render. (sighs) So I had to do it again. Like uh, I started out calling my character D2, the character that I'm using now is D8, so six times, basically. Okay, well, that's not bad. That's every third time, you know, you're getting the drop, so... But yeah. still, good for you for uh, being like, ah, gotta go back, gotta do it again. <laughs> Strap up yeah, the I boots. Thought about, I thought about not doing it, but then I was like, no. Our fan base needs me. <laughs> Uh, and we have a, a retro game back on the list. That's right. I played Cool Spot. Which uh, which platform? I always ask you this. Sega Genesis. Uh, we got a different answer this time, folks. <laughs> That's right. Breaking news. Uh, which one do you like better? Uh, I've never played the Super Nintendo version. Oh, really? No. Yeah. I thought I thought that's what um, thought that's what you played it on. Maybe I'm thinking of a different game then. Like when you'd have like Sunset Riders or something on the E list. Right. Um but Cool Spot I believe is really similar between the Genesis and the Super Nintendo. Yeah. I think so. Uh, cool Spot's a great game. Yeah. It's uh it was real fun. I played through I was being O C D about it and I was I tried to get all the, the different spots. I yeah. got ninety nine percent of them. Oh. I mi- I missed a spot somewhere. But like I, my timer ran out like two or three times trying to find it so i was like well i guess i'll just beat this level so did you end up beating the game just the first level oh okay that's a really really hard game yeah uh it was one of those where 
Saul came into my office and he kept handing me games like play this, play this. He under, he handed me uh, Knuckles Chaotix. Okay. I put that away. I was hooking up the my CDX to so I could put my 32X in it. And he hands me uh, X Men off the case. So I start playing that, and he walks out of the room almost immediately because <laughs> he got interested in something else. So I was like, "Well, I hooked this up. May as well play my cool spot." So. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, uh, there's a level where uh, you're jumping on bubbles and, mm-hmm. like, airplanes and stuff, and you have to – you're, like, over a bath water or something. Huh. You know what I'm talking – you remember what I'm talking about? I haven't played it. Holy shit, is that a frustrating level. It's one <laughs> of those where um, you're, you're elevating up in the level uh-huh. and you're platforming the whole way across, and you can miss one little platform – and just fall all the way down either to your death or you'll catch yourself, but then you it's just daunting to try to go back. Yeah. There's some big names attached to that. Uh, Dave Perry, Tommy Tellerico. Uh, Tommy Tellerico does a bunch of good music, and Dave Perry owns... Uh, he used to work for Shiny. Now he does the uh, the streaming service that PlayStation bought, Sony bought. Oh, Gaikai? Yeah. Cool. I was not aware of that. So, uh, now that you've watched in the spoiler review of Metal Gear Solid 5, yep. are you prepared for a spoiler cast? Or do you want to keep playing the game? Um, I really don't want to go back to it. I just the, the missions that they list don't sound fun. Okay. <laughs> this is... I'm at a loss for words. <laughs> I just don't I don't have the time for it anymore, man. I I understand. Wow. Like I have to in order to get the mission to see the the last ending from what I understand, I have to like play random side ops missions until it just appears and then I get to play it. That doesn't sound like fun. No, I don't I don't have the time to do that. I don't want to do it. So <laughs> I just watch somebody else do it. <laughs> All right. Well, that's Hmm. I I mean, you not in, like being enthralled with the Metal Gear game is just blowing my mind. Yeah, the uh, the the review I watched uh, the guy from Super Bunny Hop review it, and he mentioned that like with Kojima's fourth wall breaking, maybe a a Metal Gear game that seems so hollow is like his way. Maybe if he's aw- if like if Kojima is as awesome as everybody thinks he is. That is like his way of letting the player experience the Phantom Pain, of like the uh, the Phantom Pain is the Metal Gear game that isn't there anymore. Okay, and uh, like that resonated with me. I was like, oh, is that is that what happened? <laughs> That's so awesome. Like I feel that Kojima doesn't want me to play this. Right? It's, it's probably just Konami cut all the budget and said, get get the hell out of here, Kojima. Like, you're a weirdo. Kojima just wants you to want to play it. He didn't care right. if you actually play it. <laughs> we're we're all pachinko now. Get out. Yeah, yep. Yep. So, um, this weekend, uh, my buddy John came into town and, uh, he yelled at me. (laughs) He said that he checked my PlayStation log Uh and he goes, Rocket League, man, all the Rocket League. (laughs) Then he also (laughs) logged in to my Destiny character because there was like, he was going to show me how to, uh, buy some stuff and he was going to get me this gun that was only going to be available that weekend and I didn't have enough resources to buy it. And he's like, dude, have you not even touched this game? And I'm like, I've got like two or three hours into destiny. Like, I feel like I've played a lot of destiny. Yeah. And he's like, you've played nothing. I'm like, <laughs> oh. Then he hot me into a PVP match just to show me, just to see how I was. And mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm telling you, man, like I'm real bad. He's like, you can't be that bad. You can't be that bad. I think he didn't want to say it, but I think he knows I'm that bad. Right. I got a couple kills, but I felt like they were already wounded. Um, And then I started playing a little bit of uh, Darksiders 2, the definitive edition. So keep an eye out on our channel. I'll do kind of a, maybe like a 20 minute sort of a let's play, just talking about some of the differences I've noticed. All right. Um, 
I reviewed the uh, PC version of that. Yes, I'm going to rewatch that version. Uh, I very distinctly remember you talking about the horse like right out of the gate, mm-hmm. how it felt like Zelda. Yeah. Uh, yep. Right. You weren't. You were not kidding, man. Right out of the gate, there is a horse <laughs> sequence. Uh, but it was cool. Um, it looks good. It runs well. I wish right. that there were options to change the controls, though, and I don't think that there are. I'll have to go back and double check. But uh, so the Z targeting that you would get from Ocarina of Time is in this game, mm-hmm. and you have to hit L two to do that. Okay. On the Vita, if I'm doing remote play, that's a swipe mechanic. Oh. So it's unplayable on remote play. Yeah. So I would like to remap that button to the L1 button. Are you playing remote play? In my bed. (laughs) Stop it. What do you mean stop it? Just stop it. Dude, before, before I go to sleep? Are you kidding me? It's amazing. That's how I get so much Rocket League in. No. Stop. What do you want me to do? Fall asleep on the sofa behind me? You you need to make your your bedroom all about sleeping. Otherwise, it can mess up with your sleep cycle. Well, I've I my you, okay. My sleeping is horrible, <laughs> so you're probably correct. But I'm not going to change this. I I have my tablet in my room. I even moved my Wii U into my room so I can play Mario Maker before I go to bed. Helps me unwind. Why don't you just? <laughs> Why don't you just move your PlayStation 4 in there? Because I don't have a TV in that room. Oh, okay. See, the, <laughs> this is the brilliance of the Wii U and the Vita. That's right. So, Dustin has spoken. <laughs> Eric, you're funny, man. Uh, but uh, Darksiders 2 is um, uh, fun. It's good. Uh, Darksiders 2 is just a good game. Mm-hmm. So I'm looking forward to it. Uh, to just playing through it. Uh, it should be fun. Uh, I've already mentioned that uh, Arkham Knight has still got its issues, and I feel like it's too bad that people are having these issues because I really like the game. Uh, and then, Dustin, you and I got to play some co-op game together. Yeah, we did. We tried some Devil's Bluff. I mean, it was mostly competitive because you killed me a bunch of times. I did. <laughs> It was so satisfying. (laughs) So uh, if you remember a couple episodes ago, we had some developers from Ohio on, uh, KBJ Games, and they were talking about their new game, Devil's Bluff. So Dustin and I, um, they sent over a couple of codes, and I bought a copy of it, and Dustin and I started playing Devil's Bluff. And just to go back to what those guys were talking about, you're essentially, it's kind of... It's not really a who's done it, it, but it's a lot like the game Survivor. And there's got to be one last man standing. And everybody is put into a mansion, and there are objectives that you need to collect. Uh, Everybody in the mansion needs to work together to find these objectives. The caveat is one of those players is actually evil and wants to kill everyone. And by them killing everyone, they win the game. Uh, And... I got to say, man, the proximity chat, although not very clear, was really fun. Yeah. Uh, There are times when you're buddying up with somebody and you can only hear people that are close to you if you're not sure what proximity chat means. So there's no push to talk. There's no muting players because you really can't mute players in this game. It wouldn't make sense. And um, it. It's just amazing when you're walking through the mansion and all of a sudden you slightly hear somebody in the other room. And you're like, oh, hey, hey, what's up? And you try to get their attention. And you're not sure if it's the devil. You're not sure uh, what's going on. So uh, at one point we play the first game and I was lucky enough to be the devil. So I kind of tricked Dustin a little bit, but I outed myself really early trying to kill you. And you ran away from me. Yeah. And I don't know if you heard me, but I yelled at you, no, don't go tell, don't go tell. <laughs> and I did hear. You did, and you were gone. I'm like, oh, oh yeah. crap. So I'm like, now Dustin's going to get everybody, he's going to be able to convince them. Yeah, the ver- like, it's Frankenstein, it's Frankenstein. Yep, and you were right. And the ne- the very next game, Dustin and I were on the same team again. I was Frankenstein, he was the bride of Frankenstein. And this time, I was the devil again, and 
because it's random who becomes the devil, mm-hmm. Dustin really, you didn't suspect me at all this time. Yeah, not at all. And uh, I managed to convince two other players that you were the devil. Well, to a certain degree, they let me hang around with them. Yeah. And right as you showed up, I was explaining to them that you were the devil. And I was like, run, run, run. So they all ran away from you. And I ran with them. And then I got them alone and tried to kill them. Mm -hmm. And that's when I got to the point where here's where the game really flipped. And this is we started playing the game not as intended at this point. Because there was this dude is who was playing as the Cthulhu character. Yes. And he was a dickhead. And so me as the devil, I've got two people dead. And I'm talking to him. And this one guy's like, hey, devil, come on, man. Help me help you. Like, what, what can we do for you to revive me? And I was like, you know what? If you help me kill Cthulhu, I'll revive you. <laughs> so I revived two people to go hunt for Cthulhu. Then I found you, and I think I killed you, but mm-hmm. then we ultimately revived you Yeah. so that you could help kill Cthulhu. Yeah. I slapped Cthulhu right in his stupid eldritch face. Yeah. And then you killed him with a scythe. And then I killed him with a scythe. And then I had to go kill everybody else. Yeah, and, but I and, died in the scuffle, so. See, what, what was annoying was this Cthulhu character, if he would have worked together with everybody, then... We would have had you. You would have had me. I would have been screwed. There would have been no way I could have won. Yeah. But because this guy didn't work together, the devil actually teamed up with the other people to turn him into the devil, and then it was a free-for-all, which was a lot of fun. But when you make a deal with the devil, you inevitably die die. anyway. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Zarek, uh, yes, man, you do need to play Devil's Bluff. It is fun. Uh, hit, Hit us up on Twitter. Or something like that whenever, if you end up picking it up and playing, uh, I'd gladly play with you. It's fun. Uh, so let's get to our YouTube comments. Um, I, I got a text from Mike T. Uh, he's not going to be able to write in this this week. Oh, I know. It sucks. But the Cartoon Retrocast is still going strong, so if you miss Mike T, go to CartoonRetrocast.com and uh, check him out. Uh, we did start to get a little bit of traffic from CartoonRetrocast.com on our site. They, they listed us as a friend. That's awesome. I was like, hell yeah, that's badass. So uh, we are in the other cool podcast or other cool stuff logo. It's us, the Retro League, and the Raptor Show. So we're an elite company. So uh, the first comment here is from our good buddy, Domez. Again, thank you so much for saving the last episode. And uh, he says, Night of the Living Dead was the first black and white... Was, was the first black and white... Dawn of the Dead was the second and was awesome. Okay. Uh, the hold in a mall in it. Or they hold it They hold it in a mall. Um, and if I recall correctly, Day of the Dead was next to Return of the Living Dead. Uh, the third and fourth may be in reverse order, but the first two uh, I listed correct. Uh, Dawn of the Dead was the first one I saw as a kid with my mom and my brother at the drive-in. Uh, that's when I learned it was actually a sequel. Cool. And Domez says, Wikipedia tells me that Return of the Living Dead is actually its own series, by the way. Return of the Living Dead uh, is is the first in its series. Um, they basically copied the original and made it funnier, in my opinion. He also, going into uh, last week's uh, talk about Guilty Pleasures... Uh, from a music perspective, uh, he loves Lady Gaga's Born This Way. He says it's just fucking great, and I will not be ashamed. That's right, man. Uh, and finally, he says, and I think he's talking to me. Uh, he goes, dude, they nerfed a Warrior Grim Patron deck. Oh. Holy shit. Oh, I know, Dustin, the travesty. <laughs> the horror. Uh, what they did was Warsong Commander no longer gives charge. All it does is charge minions you control get plus one. Or charge range you control plus one. He says, it's about fucking time they fixed this, but did not think they would do it with a nerf this big. Berserker is still OP, though, and gets plus one uh, attack from any damaged minion uh, and not friendly minions. Uh, single Grim Warrior kills are a thing of are a thing of the past. Um, anyway, so... Yeah, um, Dustin and I... 
I have been uh, slacking on my um, Hearthstone. I think I said I got up to like level rank six or so. Do you mm-hmm. remember what I said? Was it rank six? I think so. It was either six or eight, but it was. I got really high, and uh, I haven't went back. I felt like I beat the game for a while, so I've taken a bit of a break. <laughs> so, uh, and then, uh, do you want to take on uh, Zarek's comment? Yeah. All right. Uh, Zarek says, forgot to post my comment. I used to have a pretty good comic collection because of my mom. Sweet. She worked next door to a comic store. The owner would give her comics that either were rare or would be rare. My uncle came to visit us and stole them all. Not sweet. That blows. Uh, regarding Batman on Steam, I may be one of the spazzes Tony talked about. I'm very unforgiving of certain things. They didn't just <laughs> accidentally release a buggy, broken game. If you take a look at all the drama around all their other games, it's clear that, they, that they're an unethical company. They're always doing something shady. There's proof that they knew the game was broken and they just didn't care. If it wasn't for the Steam refunds, they wouldn't have ever fixed the game at all. If you can call a game that still crashes constantly fixed, well, at least it doesn't uninstall the game randomly anymore. I guess I can't really be surprised that a company owned by Time Warner is unethical. <laughs> he's, he's, you cannot argue with anything he said there. Yeah. Uh, he says, I'm thinking of getting Overwatch as well. It looks like a fun game for sure. I've been playing a ton of Warhammer uh, Vermintide lately. I think I'm addicted. Yeah, it's been on his uh, YouTube channel. So check that oh. out. I need to watch you at work. Um, Fallout 4. He always, already, he's, he's got this... Uh, all right, Zarek, I'm going to try to do it. Hey, everyone, this is Zarek. <laughs> that's my, impre- that's my impre- impersonation or impression of him uh, and how he starts his videos. I think I got it. <laughs> that's good. And then he goes into like a uh, more docile tone, but he always starts with that real aggressive... This is Zarek. You, you sounded kind of like uh, Macho Man. Okay. Oh, see, he doesn't. So I'm like somewhere in between the two. Okay. Um, I want to Slim Jim all of a sudden. <laughs> uh, Fallout 4. I've already purchased three copies of Fallout 4. <laughs> Starting to sound like Mike T. Yeah. Uh, I've got two Pip-Boy editions. I plan on doing a giveaway for one of them. That's smart. Uh, by the way, they're releasing Fallout Beer and Fallout Soda. <laughs> so that way you can get them bottle caps. That's right. I did see that. Like uh, they were going to do a promotion like that. Which is pretty cool. cool. Uh, wow, Scott, you did National Lampoon's Vegas Vacation for real. <laughs> uh, did you also get a fake ID and win enough money to save the family after your dad gambled away all the family savings? <laughs> I'm going to start calling you Rusty, or is it <laughs> Mr. Papa Giorgio? Oh, uh, that is. I uh, I took my great like middle school girlfriend, like seventh eighth grade. Mm-hmm. to that movie just to make out the whole time right on so i was like so i have a uh, strong nostalgia for that movie even though i don't remember a lot of it <laughs> just the audio i loved like i can still watch that movie yeah i'm like yeah it takes me back uh and then he goes on to say here are some guilty pleasure songs loving you by minnie ripperton and over the rainbow like the uh, from Wizard of Oz, you think? I think so. Like somewhere over the rainbow, skies are blue. Yeah. Loving you is that the one where she gets real high pitched? Yeah. Uh, Nailed yeah. it. I, pretty much. See, I should have sang "Easy Lover" at the beginning of the the uh, podcast. <laughs> you just need to get more drunk more often. I, I well, I've been getting hammered during the show. Clearly. <laughs> I do like I do like when I when I have a couple before the show though I, I feel all loose and whatnot, although uh, so Iz is a Hawaiian. I don't know what that like over the rainbow dash Iz. I'm not familiar with Iz. Is, is. So, uh, yeah, I think that will do it for this week's show. Uh, I want to um, I want, I want to tell everyone to go check out Zarek's gaming channel. Uh, X-E-A-R-R-I-K. Uh, he's got good stuff. 
Uh, Dumbass's gaming channel. Search for D U H M E Z. Um, big thank you to him for helping out last week. And then um, shout out to Mike T, even though he wasn't able to make it this week. Um, he finished Halo 5, and his review was meh. Huh. Oh. IZ is the fat Hawaiian dude who plays the ukulele. Or played the ukulele. Past tense there. Know who you're talking about now. Um, well, very cool. Um, yeah, if other people have uh, are listening to this and they have Guilty Pleasure songs, leave them in the comments below. Uh, if I find a good chiptune rendition, maybe I'll play it in the uh, podcast audio feed. Um, yeah, so uh, at this point, uh, go check those guys out. And I want to thank Ben Landis very much for letting us use his song, uh, Through the Forest, as our intro music. And we're on Stitcher, we're on iTunes. Um, please leave us a rating. Uh, I know our listener base is small, but it, any little bit would help tremendously. We haven't had a review on uh, either in, in quite some time. So if you haven't left us a review and you'd like to, that would be sweet. Uh, if you want to follow us, we're on Twitter, we're on Facebook, we're on Twitch. We are on, most importantly, YouTube. All you have to search for is Classic Leet. That's Classic L337, and you'll be able to find that. Our podcast is also available at ClassicLeet.com. Uh, if you want to get the MP3 directly from us. Uh, outro music this week, Dustin, is from Rush Jet One. Uh, you may remember him as someone that I played uh, as a... Um, he had really cool uh, re-rendition of Mega Man songs uh, okay. maybe about a year or so ago. So people may be familiar with him. And uh, this song is called Reflection of Reality. It's just an upbeat song, so I thought it would be fun to play. So we will do that. Uh, I want to thank everyone very much for tuning in to episode 160 of Classic Leet, and we will uh, see you next week for episode 161. Boosh!